Welcome! In this bookkeeping video, we will learn ways you can create a simple financial system for your child care business. The information that's contained within this subject today has been prepared by Civitas Strategies Early Start and is not intended to constitute legal, tax, or financial advice. During today's conversation, we will review several topics, which are how do I account for funds coming in and going out? How do I record my transactions? And lastly, how do I get started on basic bookkeeping? At the heart of any successful business, from the one person operation to a Fortune 500 company, is a financial accounting system. These systems are critical because first and foremost, they let you know where your money is, where it's going, and how much you're making. Having this information readily available will allow you to start doing things like paying yourself without putting your company at risk, managing your cash flow so that you always have enough money to pay your bills and knowing when it's time to grow and how to do so. It's understandable that for many childcare businesses, even these first steps of getting on the path to creating a financial system seems daunting. This conversation will walk you through the basics of developing a system, which really consists of just two big steps. First, getting a business bank account and secondly, adopting a bookkeeping system. Developing a bookkeeping system. Once you have your business bank account in hand, you can start to think about a basic system for bookkeeping. Bookkeeping is very important because it is going to help you understand where your money is coming from as it flows into your business so that's how you track revenues and it allows you to see where it's going. That's monitoring expenses and how much profit you're making, which is managing your cash flow. And profit is just a fancy way of saying how much money is left after you pay all of your bills. So there's three steps to developing a bookkeeping system. Step one, is you'll determine how you will account for funds going in and out. Step two is how you will determine how you'll record your transactions. And step three is setting a schedule to review and record your transactions so that you stay on track. Step one, determine how you will account for funds coming in and going out. There are two basic methods in accounting. One is an accrual method, which is more complex and is based on when an expense or revenue is taken on or accrued. For example, if using the accrual me method, the moment you receive your credit card bill, the amount owed would be taken from your assets versus when you actually pay the bill. If using the cash method, this amount would be taken from your assets when the bill is paid. The cash method is more common for childcare businesses and is less challenging as it is based on when things are paid or received. Let's look at revenues. When a child is in your care for a week, let's say a parent owes you $200. Under the accrual method, that $200 is considered income at that time. Under the cash method, the $200 wouldn't be considered income until the parent gave you the check and you deposited it. For most small child care businesses, the cash method is both simpler and more helpful because it's going to let you know exactly when many money is coming in and out of your account. This method is more comfortable because it will in, in many ways match the act of balancing your checkbook, just in a bigger sense and in a bigger way.
Step two is where you'll determine how you will record your transactions. So now that you've determined how you will account for funds, you need to determine how you're going to record your transactions. For many small childcare businesses, it will be easy to record transactions on a sheet of paper or on a spreadsheet such as Microsoft Excel or a Google Sheet. You want to set up just some simple categories to start. You first, you want to first start with your income and determine what are the key revenue streams for your business. That is the sources that you primarily get your money. Likely parent fees will be one of them. Another might be childcare subsidy or payments from the food program. Perhaps there are additional funds that you receive for after school students or grant funds. Each one of these will be a separate revenue stream to account for. Next, you'll list out your expenses. This may include items like payroll, cleaning, rent, repairs, supplies, and other categories that match your business. The important thing about categories is to try to limit them. You don't need to detail every category that might occur, but just focus on the categories that you have right now. You could always add categories along the way, but if you have too many, it could become overwhelming and very difficult to account for spending or revenue as you spend time figuring out which category does this belong to. You can use um, simple categories as displayed here on this here uh, slide for an example. Step three, you will set a schedule to record and review your transactions. You should set up a time to update your books at least every month. You may choose to update more frequently, but at minimum, do it once a month. To update your books, start looking at all your revenue sources. You'll look at your cash, credit card and app payment systems like Venmo or Zelle, and also checks that were written to you. And you'll enter each one of them into your income on your spreadsheet. Next, you will record your expenses. You can look through your receipts, look at bank or credit card statements and invoices that you've had from people who you've had to pay. Any of these proofs of payments can help you to not only record these costs, but also more importantly, to make sure that you're recording the right amount for each one. Though it may seem tedious to record each transaction, it does become important in terms of understanding your profitability by tracking exactly where your money is coming from and where it's going to. Once you have recorded all of your revenue and expenses for the month, you will then add each category up. When you subtract revenue from your expenses, this will give you an idea of how much profit you've made that month. You may want to consider taking some of that profit out or leaving it in the business for a rainy day or to help paying with your bills that may be coming up. You can use a simple format like this to help you record and track your monthly revenue. A simple header of what revenue did I receive and you'll be able to place the date the description of what you were paid for, the amount you received, and the category that you are placing it under. Similarly, you can use this simple format to track your monthly expenses. A header of what did I pay for, along with the dates, the descriptions of what was paid for, the amounts paid, and the categories that those expenses fall under. And here are some pro tips. When categorizing and filling 
and filing your receipts, be sure to label them so that you remember what category they've been placed under. Next, you want to stick to a regular schedule. Make sure that you're going to update your records, whether it's monthly, every other week, or every week. Have a schedule. This will save you time and headache for the future. Leaving all of your expenses and revenue to pile up is not going to help you and, won't, and you won't be able to understand how your business is doing on a moment's notice, nor will you likely keep up the system as it becomes more and more intimidating to record so many receipts and statements that have piled up since you last updated your system. Next, you want to consider an electronic system over time. It can be very tedious to do accounting by hand. So you may want to create a simple spreadsheet or even get an online system. When looking for online systems like QuickBooks or FreshBooks or Xero, think about the ease of use, the cost and the complexity. The reality is that for many of you with a small childcare business, you may not need QuickBooks or more complicated systems. It may be something where you want to choose a simpler one that's going to be less, ex less expensive and easier to use. Even still, make sure you keep all your records, whether it's by taking photos or scanning each receipt and statement so that you have it electronically or even just the good old shoebox method putting everyone and everything in one place. Make sure that you hold on to the documentation of the transactions used for your bookkeeping system. This is important in case you are audited by the IRS. It's also important because it will allow you to go back and check your information if needed. Additional resources for early care and education can be found at the Wisconsin Early Childhood Association or WECA website. If you are not a member of the Wisconsin Early Education Shared Services Network, you can click here to learn about business training and support it offers. If you are ready to join the Wisconsin Early Education Shared Services Network, you can also click here to join.